Yeah, and we have to remember there is no test. Like we're not teaching them to, to pass a test at the end of the year. And so we actually have the liberty, like you said, to, especially for those of us that are more intuitive and pay attention to emotions and others better, to notice the kid that has got something sitting inside of them and invite them out. It is, you're right, it's a very important thing to always be open to the spirit wanting to derail your Bible study. <laughs> That's, oh, it's so good. Because in the midst of some kind of conversation, let's say you're having a Bible study, someone brings up the wound that they've been carrying for three months. And this all of a sudden was the moment where they felt as though they could bring it up. That all of a sudden takes precedence over everything else. And that's okay. And what's beautiful in some sense is everyone else gets to witness you helping to make someone else whole. And I think I said it last time, the programming is nice. Youth ministry program is good, but it's only there to set up the moments like that. We do retreats so that you can have a side comment 15 minutes because that's where the real ministry happens yes I understand it's important to educate the next generation about the 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 what of the faith it's another thing to also care for their souls at the same time are you about to say something Linda well, it was kind of along the same line was when you know you have your plans and you've got things laid out for you and then Right. That's right. Uh huh. So the parents really. <laughs> the children were out there waiting for their parents, and the minister was way above their heads, and they had no idea what he was saying. Yeah. So that, that kind of a, this goes along with it too. You know, speak to to the person. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, uh, have you heard of Henry Nowen? You know that name? Yeah. He, he brought out some really beautiful writings from his own hurt. And in some sense, he came across as one of those saints before he passed away. People knew he was a saint before he died. And it, in some sense, it's because he said the most personal is somehow the most universal and he would go into very personal things in some of his writings about extreme loneliness and feelings of rejection and what he found is that out of giving these very specific circumstances he was actually resonating with millions of people because somehow the most personal is the most universal so if you do see a youth that's dealing with a very unique personal circumstance, if you have the opportunity to talk about it and the room feels safe, I guarantee the rest of the room will somehow identify with that very personal hurt. Because in some reality, we all deal with the same things just through different circumstances, right? I mean, probably all of us can experience or, or tell of a story of rejection. All of our stories of rejection might be specifically different, but they've all got the, the theme rejection stamped all over it. And so what does it mean to say that we're all accepted by Christ and that's what the church hopes to be as well, an accepting place.